the fertilization is when life begins. And I thought I was so right when I said that. Oh, fertilization, right? That's when the cells are dividing, and that's when it becomes a person. And Jeff Young, he said, well, the sperm and the ovum, they have cells, too, so they're living tissue. So that's, you know, that's life also. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So the where that dividing line is, I think that's ex that's the question. And I think that, you know, is even though I'm, I'm, pro, I'm, mo I'm pro Roe v. Wade, so I'm mostly pro-choice, but I can't stand the third, um, the trimester, the partial birth abortions. And so uh, where is that line? The Roe v. Wade says when the baby's viable outside the mother's body, I believe that's the language, whereas they're saying it's a heartbeat. And how can you, you know, if there's a heartbeat, that feels like a life to me. So I think that the question, like basically, I mean, that you that you posed is the question that needs to be answered. Where does life begin? Where is it the mother's? You know, that it's a part of the mother versus it's its own thing. Right, but I don't know the government should make that decision. Right. The right. The the carry concealed bill. Uh, I generally am in favor of that. Um, yeah. Uh, I, 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 the, 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 the basic problem is so we're inching towards a police state where only 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 a special class of people will have firearms and we'll all be slaves. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I don't want that. Yeah, no, that's the point of the Second Amendment is to prevent tyranny. Yeah. The, the, what was the other one? There's the heartbeat, oh, the right to work. You right to work. Yeah, I was I'm opposed to the right to work law. Okay. Uh, I, I understand why it occurred, and basically it's because the, the law has been kind of skewed the other way, where uh, unions have certain prerogatives that might be might be uh, unfair. But I, I really think it's a mistake to say that uh, you can't have a closed shop. If, if everyone wants a closed shop, uh, you should be able to have it. Nice, because that seems to be, it seems like it's just a, I don't know, like a, a little tiny thing that you think it's one thing, but really it's to destroy the union, so I think it's just kind of a, a right to work, like I, I want I want a right, that sounds good, right, I want a right to work, um, I deserve my right to work, but it's the, if they have a closed shop, then they're allowed to not join the union. And when I think about the heyday of Kentucky, I, I love the solidarity that the Harlan County coal miners had shown um, during those strikes. So, let's see, uh, where are you at on vaccinations? Well, generally, uh, I am, uh, <laughs> I try to be up in my silence and doing the silence of wonderful things. Um, I, uh, uh, let's see, I, I think I was born before the MMR vaccine came along. I got a chickenpox, I mean, a smallpox vaccination when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, so, so that vaccinations, vaccines are probably all uh, a good thing, but I don't think they should be mandatory. Okay. So you did, uh, did you get any other shots or just your smallpox shot? Well, I guess I've gotten the hepatitis uh, vaccine since or else. I don't know the other... What other vaccines are there? There's, uh, the there's like 20 of them. Japanese encephalitis. There's anthrax. They got something for anthrax. They got shingles. Um, they got a bunch of them out yeah. right now. So yeah, good. I mean, uh, I, I, mean, I think I've read the flu shot, too. But, uh, it more, not, not, uh, it's not a matter of general principle. I just feel that uh, getting sick every once in a while just makes you stronger. So <laughs> I understand now. Jeff, I assume you were... Uh, Like chicken pox, you, you were kind of down for a few days. Right. That, 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 I think that the biggest problem, as I recall, is that uh, the R, the Rubella, which is German measles, would lead to complications if you got it later in life, uh, uh, particularly pregnant women. I think that was one of the 
leading causes of blindness. Uh, women would get uh, uh, given measles while they were pregnant, and their, their uh, child would be born blind. Uh, I could be wrong on that. I need to look it up. But, uh, uh, so uh, the important thing was to either, either contract that as a kid or get vaccinated. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, uh, so uh, it's an issue, but I uh, uh, and, and I can understand the schools could have. Uh, I think having local policies, uh, you know, to the extent that we have to coerce people, I think it's best to do it at the local level uh, because you can always go with your feet if you don't like it. Um, right. So having school uh, set up a policy is fine with me, but having the government impose a policy. That's a very good answer. Um, so being a libertarian, I, I guess I assume a couple things about you. You're against the war on drugs? Yeah. You're in favor of prostit prostitution? I'm in favor of prostitution. <laughs> I'm in favor of legalizing prostitution, yes. Yeah, it's because you're about freedom, right? It's your body you sh if you're an adult. Exactly. Yeah. And it's actually cleaner, too. I think they do it in Amsterdam or ne the Netherlands where they actually have a card. They get uh, checkups and they have STD-free cards, so it's uh, safer. Whenever you, whenever you drive a, make something illegal, you drive it underground and it becomes more dangerous. And that's true drugs. And it also makes it more, gives a profit incentive to make a bunch of money and create a bunch of Al Capone sort of kind of criminals out here. Okay, cool. Um... So, uh, child abuse. You got uh, any thoughts on child abuse? <laughs> I guess uh, the distinction, well, people always uh, say discipline. A very good and it's kind of hard to define it, uh, I think. Um, what about corporal punishment? Well, okay. I'm opposed to child abuse, and I'm opposed to corporal punishment. How's that? But I, I, I think, again, government needs to be very uh, careful about intervening on that. Uh, uh, different people, it, I, I certainly respect the rights of uh, parents to uh, uh, raise their kids the way they want to. Yeah. Um, I would say at a certain point, um, uh, there, there can be abuse where intervention is necessary, but I, I'm, and I'm not an expert on, on how that works and when that should occur, but um, I, I, I think whatever, oh, I don't know, the, why it's a, it's a complicated issue. Uh, I know there are a lot of problems where uh, the, um, I should probably stay out of that one, John. Okay. I not the press, but I, I guess you have the press, aren't you, Coach? You're going to put this on YouTube or something, aren't you? Yeah, I'm uh, recording all this. I'm going to put your picture right next to my face so that way people can see the face and hear the voice. Okay. The, I, I thought it was a good answer in the beginning, so maybe you should just answer the question and then just don't explain it, you know, just just answer it and then just shut up, you know, because <laughs> I like the answer and then I think you're, because you're right, there's some things when you're talking about it, like not you, but when I, when I'm talking about it, it's like I haven't really thought it through yet when I was thinking about the carriage, because I'm pro Second Amendment, but I like, you know, a lot of the stuff that uh, the laws are out there, there used to be like, it used to be a felony if you saw a, a felon, uh, commit a crime and you didn't do anything about it, that you were considered an accessory, so you were, you know, required to step up. So when I think about the old Wild West, the old Wild West wanted you to have the gun, you know, outside on you, so that way you know who's got the gun and, you know, who, what's going on. It's holstered and it's, you know, there's a code to, to the thing. So carry concealed, yeah, it's good. If you're a criminal, right, it's good for the community that, you know, you never know who's got a gun. But if you're a law-abiding citizen, well, anybody, you know, any criminal could have a gun too. So I guess I, uh, I'm pro-Second Amendment so in general, you know, if it uh, strengthens the gun. But I guess I'm just saying that um, I hadn't thought it through, so it's like maybe I shouldn't, you know, give my opinion about it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, prison rates. <laughs> no, well, I thought, I, no, I guess, yeah, okay. Um, 
Because you're right. I mean, you're, I think where the uh, polls were, you're right. You, parents have rights. Children have rights. So where is that line? And you said you're opposed to corporal punishment, which I, I liked because I feel that's assault. If I was to take a cop and just yeah. start spanking him to correct him, hey, you need to stop murdering people and just start spanking him, like, you know, just over and over again. Even James Holmes, the worst. Maybe we could introduce that into our criminal justice system, but we don't do that to adults. You know, it's an assault, and you get fined, you get thrown in jail, you might even get executed, but you don't get spanked. You don't get caned. You don't get attacked. You don't get hit. And so I guess the the contradiction between those two is just um, I, I can't stand it. So okay, uh, the prison rates. Where, where the um, where are you at on prison rates? I think Kentucky's one of the top ten for locking up a lot of people, women, and some other things. Yeah, uh, uh, and this is a perfect. Uh, example of, of uh, a, a symptom of deeper problems. Uh, obviously, we've talked about drugs and legalizing and drugs. A, a, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, uh, population is due to drugs. Not all, though. Yeah. Um, and um, but we need to we need to uh, try to figure out why. We need, yeah, we need to dissect the problem. And address the address what we uh, I should say dissect the the symptom that the prison population uh, presents us <laughs> and uh, address the individual problems that created it. Uh, I certainly thought uh, the the freeing all nonviolent uh, all criminal all nonviolent uh, all, all yeah sort of in prison because of nonviolent crimes uh, yeah and. Uh, um uh, uh restoring uh, their uh, their rights and so forth. Yeah. Um well, uh, yeah, it's special how high how our, our I mean the, the US incarceration rate uh, I think is the highest in the world, isn't it? Yeah. The highest. Yeah, we got more people uh, in prison percentage wise than China. So, uh, uh, and uh, there's a uh, we we got work cut out for us there. We need to. Uh, need to it, it, it's an indication of, of social problems that are much deeper than than uh, the prison system. And, I mean, I, I, it, well, there are several problems there. I mean, you, you, I mean, we can talk about uh, talk about private prisons. We can talk about the, the, our our court system, where we're basically. Uh, if you don't, if you can't afford a lawyer, you're pretty much stuck. Uh, yeah. You can live defending yourself, um, and you wind up pleading guilty of something you're not guilty of. Um, there's all these crimes that shouldn't be crimes. Well, shouldn't be on the books. No, yeah, that. <laughs> That's a great, uh, 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 there's corruption in the judiciary as a private citizen. If I can't afford a lawyer, I don't, I think they'll just laugh at me because, you know, who am I? I'm not part of their little club. So I think that's important. But you, you also mentioned private prisons. So what, what did, uh, what's your thoughts on private prisons? Well, uh, I mean, in general, it's probably not a bad idea to, to outsource where you can, but, but probably prisons are the last place you'd want to outsource because there's a, uh, a tendency, um, uh, again, it gets into <laughs> chronic capitalism, I guess, where, where uh, it's in the in the, the company's best interest to, to populate their facility, and so they're going to be uh, rooting for being tough on crime and so forth and so on. Um, <laughs> there is this a jailer in Breckeridge County, and she said that uh, she was worked in the jailer. She was going to try to be in the new jailer. And she said that her main priority was to fill those beds with heads so they can, you know, pass their budget. And I feel like, wait a second, that's not the point of a jail to fill it up and make you money. The point of a jail is to, Norway actually has a system to where it's, uh, you know, I, I would encourage you to check it out, but ultimately it's working. The, the recidivism rate is, you know, z nearly zero, and they're running out of prisoners, so they're having to shut prisons down, you know, so it's kind of going the opposite direction of how the private prison industry is working. 
Yeah, we need to build homes and build room and incentives to shut things down rather than to populate them. Yeah. The, uh, there is some issues uh, in Kentucky about uh, getting independence on the ballot. You have to get 5,000 signatures if you're not, there's some rules, I think, if depending on the presidential election, they have to get a percentage-wise or something. Have you encountered any of that? How many, si how many signatures? Yeah, uh, you know, the, the libertarians right now, as I understand it, um, there are three types of political organizations in Kentucky. Yeah. The political part the two major political parties are at the top level. Uh, the so called political organizations that are the middle level. Huh. And there's I think political associations as the bottom level. Interesting. Uh, uh, in order to be, to move up to the second level you need to get two percent of the president presidential votes. Hmm. Uh, not the governor's vote, not any other vote, but the presidential vote. Right. And happily, because of the Gary Johnson campaign in 2016, the Libertarians made that uh, mark, and, and we moved up to the second level. So for four years, we have the opportunity to put people in the ballot without having to, to do a separate petition drive for every person that goes on the ballot. Next year, uh, 2020 is, is the last of those four years, so uh, we'll see how we do in the presidential race next year uh, as to whether we get another four years. But that's uh, um, a tough. Uh, and, and of course, we still don't get a primary. We still don't get a tax for a finance primary until, and I don't know the percentage we need to get to move up to that top level. Yeah. So yeah, the, everything is. Uh, uh, stopped against third parties, right? Um, and I, I don't think that's healthy. I, I do believe, and this is very much a part of my my own personal platform, is that the two party system uh, is broken, uh, and uh, uh, basically our democracy is broken because because of the two party system. Things you know, nobody really intended for us to have a two party system. You know, our founding fathers warned against parties, yeah, uh, and this naturally evolves this way. A large part of the reason for that is um, um, the way we elect representatives, and the way we elect most of our elections for councils and legislatures and so forth are by single member districts, and we, we have plurality election rather than majority election. Right. So you might have to. Um, uh, that, uh, that forces you to form uh, parties, and of course, and, and, and once you start parties, they tend to uh, weave themselves out to you've got two major parties, but they're battling each other. Uh, so part of what I favor ultimately uh, uh, is moving to a system of professional representation. Interesting. Uh, where you would have multi-member districts, and the people elected in a given district will represent a cross section of that district. Because I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind the sorry. idea. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I, I oh, the, uh, I don't mind the idea of political parties, and there was, you know, watch out for the factions. But ultimately, I would think, just like in a free market society, there's going to be, you know, rise and fall. I think where we're at with the two party system right now, they're, you know, they, um, they're a monopoly. They're a monopoly. So, and you know, they're. Um, there's a bunch of things I could say about the two parties, but I guess the the libertarian challenge, the libertarian challenge in Kentucky. How many signatures uh, did you get to get on the ballot for this year? Well, from time to time, we have a a political an official political organization. We only need you know a, a couple of signatures on our uh, nomination papers. It's not really a formal petition. So three, three uh, signatures. Uh, I don't know exactly. I, I don't quote me, but it's not it's not really a, a petition. We don't we don't actually need a petition. Yeah, no, I it's understand. Like, but you have the formal uh, a nomination a certificate saying that we nominated these people to our uh, in our primary or our convention or something like that. But it's a lot less of a five thousand signature threshold. 
All right, yeah, what's this? Then uh, the proportional, I, I'm i somewhat um, um, partial to, you said, uh, what did you say, the party? What, what the political system were you in favor of? Representation? Is that what you said? The in general, yeah, it would be proportional representation. Right, okay. Uh, specifically, there's a couple of ways to do that. Uh, the specific system that I favor is called single transferable vote. Is that, is that it? Okay, go ahead. That sounds like, is that instant runoff voting? Is that the ranked choice preferential? Yeah. Well, it's based on ranked choice voting. Uh, ranked choice voting can be used in a single member district, and we would call it instant runoff voting for that. Okay. And that would be, that, that's the first step. We need we definitely need instant runoff voting. Uh, this would give third parties uh, 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 a chance um, uh and in, in independent candidates a chance. Basically, you've always got the spoiler effect. Yeah. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, single member districts, and, and uh, people are afraid to vote for their favorite because they're they're they're, they're least favored by Gwen. Right. So they vote for their their second choice or third choice because they think they have a better chance of winning. So. It's a runoff voter voting would allow people to vote for their first choice, and if, they, if he doesn't win, if he or she doesn't win, uh, their second choice, and so forth. So right. That would be a great boom, I think, for democracy in general and for third parties and independents in particular. And you said so that was. going to a second step in moving to multi member districts. Yeah. That, that, that's the wrong term. We, we're not going to be able to do that anytime soon. <laughs> I am hoping that uh, this runoff is being adopted uh, very slowly, but uh, you know they've got it up in, in Maine, and they're working on it. I think in Vermont, I believe, and uh, at least some of the city councils in Minnesota are using this runoff. Yeah, there, it's in a couple cities in Colorado and uh, California to the um, Academy Awards. When they vote for Best Picture, they use it. In India, they use it. and It's all over the place. I I disagree. I mean, I, I agree that um, we, uh, we need it, but you said that it's going to take a while. It might take a while, but I feel like shouldn't we have a fair democracy, like, right from jump, right from, like, as soon as we get out of the gate, I mean, we're going to have – Essentially, we have a four-horse race where two horses are almost at the finish line, and then the the other two horses are all the way in the back. So, the if we don't fix our democracy, that's like a you know one of those that's like economics. If we don't fix our you know our de democratic system, where how can we go from there? Oh, it's corrupt. Well, let's just keep on letting it be corrupt. So I feel I guess the it needs to be fixed now. Like I guess I feel like it just uh. The, an overwhelming sense of we need a fair democracy to begin with right now. We don't need a. Yeah, right. Let me let me let me follow up on that now. Yeah. The best way we can do it. I'm I'm uh, I believe I'm a realist, Jonathan. We can't do it overnight, but but what we can be doing is uh, uh, I think the most certain way to get this done is to vote for third parties. If you're not a libertarian, if you want libertarian, and the libertarians get enough votes that they they swing the election, they they spoil the election. Somebody won who shouldn't have won because all these people voted libertarian. That will break the system. That will wake people up, and that will tell them that we need a better system. So the yeah. way to do it is to we need to disrupt the system, and the way to do it is to vote for. Uh, uh, anything but the two parties. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I guess it just you know uh, until we they don't have they, they I guess what what uh, I don't know <laughs> I don't want to say you don't have a chance because that's what they always say. Everybody has a chance, right? This is America. Everybody's got a chance. But if the the spoiler effect, you're right, it does to disrupt the system. They blamed Ralph Nader, right, because uh, he he stole the election from Gore, even though Gore ran a horrible campaign. The Supreme Court, that they forget about the Supreme Court, you know, just deciding on the damn thing. So, so I I don't know where I'm going with that, but um, <laughs> I guess I'm just saying that it's. Uh, 
we need it, it needs to be fixed. So, like, yeah, you're right. To disrupt the system, we could vote for the independent candidate. But I want to vote for you, so you, or, you know, the the independent candidate, so you would win. Not just to disrupt the system, not as a protest vote, but as a vote that this is going to go to the, you know, the best person for the job. And um, right. rank choice. Just, doesn't do it. But in the meantime, uh, there's something that's accomplished by, by voting for third parties, even if you don't win. Right. Right, right. Yeah, there is a purpose to voting for. I am. Uh, I've been voting for Green Party for you know last twelve years, and I feel very good about it. I, the idea of voting for the lesser of the two evils is just so repugnant to me. And when I go vote, I not only do I vote for the Green Party for president, but it's how I look at the entire elections now. I vote for those who I like, those who I approve of. I'm not going to just hold my nose or just oh I kind of knew that person or that person and just to vote just to be voting. But I feel a sense of responsibility. I'm voting for this candidate. I'm endorsing this candidate. I'm saying this candidate's going to you know go out and do well. And since I've been thinking like that, it's hard to vote for, you know, uh, a lot of the candidates that are out there. Mm -hmm. You feel me? <laughs> the, uh, I guess the last questions I have is just uh, your opinions about the, uh, the campaigns and the political race. Do you have any, um, do you have any, what are your thoughts about the campaign so far, how the Democrats have been running themselves, how the Republicans have been running themselves? Do you have any predictions? Uh, I, I, I do not have any predictions. I have not endorsed anybody in the Democratic primary. Uh, I, uh, 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 I, I would say that, um, uh, yeah, you know, if, if lightning strikes and I'm, I'm elected governor, uh, I look forward to working with both major parties because I believe that under the surface, uh, they, they tend to be good people, you know. Hmm. Uh, the system tends to, to make them be a bit hypocritical, mm -hmm. uh, but I think they're all, they're all honest and wanting to do good stuff. And I think the key to good leadership is to, to tap that and, and to, to get people working together uh, and, um, and not to, to put them against each other. Well, the independent is actually probably the most uh, perfect person posed to or poised to bring them two together because it would be partisan if it's not an independent. Mm -hmm. Do you know if uh, Amy, Amy Husk is running? Uh, there's, is there a Socialist Workers Party in the race? Well, the, I believe it was, is it the Socialist? I don't know. Is there any other independence that you know of that's in the race? Well, oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, no, I haven't uh, been made aware of them. Yeah. Uh, I think you mentioned that there were some, right? Yeah, just the, I, I believe it's true, but I guess I, you know, you read something and it's, it could be true or not. You have to get it kind of told to you several times before I believe it. But I think there's a socialist... Well, uh, Workers' Party. Well, locally, I know mean, the Social Democrats, I think they're trying to work within the Democratic Party, right? Probably, yeah. I, I don't, I'm not for sure. Uh, Social Workers, I don't know. I don't know what they're up to. How has the media been treating you? Have you been getting any interviews? Have been, people been talking to you, or do you think it's just because it's primary and it's not the general election? Or uh, Actually, we're... Uh, and we haven't talked about this yet. You know, we're, 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 we've got a couple of legal problems with our hurdles to pass, so we have not been running a real active campaign. Uh, the, uh, uh, that uh, taking it face value would keep us off the ballot. So uh, today, of all days, you call on, on a, a special day where we're actually in court um, I believe it's in Cincinnati, in federal court, suing the, um, the powers that be to force them to uh, be on the ballot. Basically, what the legislature did um, was change the deadline for filing a statement of candidacy, which is the first step you have to take if you're going to go on the ballot. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the deadline has been the first of April. Uh, and 
Bruce here in, in, I think in March, they passed a law saying the deadline was the middle of January. So it was basically ex post facto, probably of our voting rights and so forth and so on. So it's completely unconstitutional. But when we filed our statements of